Hello guys, welcome back to MGS School of Mining and Geology. In today's session, we are dealing with the classification of sandstones. So basically sandstones that contain less than 10% clay matrix are called aronites. And um, this can be subdivided based on the percentage of quartz, phosphorus, and unstable lithic fragments. So without any further waste of time, um, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and hit the notification button below so that you get notified once we upload new content. All right, so um, basically sandstone is a type of sedimentary rock made, made mostly of sand grains um, um, that have been compacted and cemented together, uh, together over time. And it forms when sand is deposited by wind, water, or ice, and then buried and hardened into a rock. And then you'll you will agree with me that the sandstone that, it, 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 it's, that is formed in the Iolian Desert, it will be very uh, um, fine-grained as compared to the one that uh, can be formed by, by water. So... Where is sandstone found? The sandstones, they are found in the Iolian environments and um, these are June sandstones and these are very fine grained um, due to the fact that um, wind um, will be able to carry fine grained materials. And then you can also find the uh, uh, have the coastal sandstones and the fluvial sandstones, which is a bit um, um, are, are rough textured and then deep uh, um, sea flows, which are um, uh, uh, should be right. Okay, so um, the sandstones they can be classified um, into the composition, the grain size and sorting, and the cement type. So um, the 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 um, sandstones. They, these are different types of sandstones. This is the quartz aronite. This is the, the type of a sandstone that is containing at least 90% of quartz. And then we've got the um, acoustic one containing phosphorus. And then we've got uh, ferruginous with iron materials and the lithic ones. And then calcareous ones containing calcium carbonates um, and the kariwaki, which is just the containing um, ba basically more than 15% of um, at clay matrix, okay? So basically this is how you can classify the um, sandstone. Um, mostly sandstone is classified according to their, um, to its um, chemical composition. And we're gonna be talking about the um, quartz, phosphorus, and lithics. That's basically how you're gonna be able to classify quartz according to its composition. And later on, we're gonna deal with um, how you can classify it according to the, uh, its respective green sizes and the cement types. So basically, um, you know that the word um, sand, it means arena in Spanish, all right? So, um, so arenite, which is why it's also a sandstone, okay? So uh, basically, the sandstone, this sandstone is um subdivided based on the, the percentage of quartz phosphorus and unstable lithic fragments okay or fragments of pre-existing rocks okay so basically what is happening is um here you can see over here it's quartz and then over here it's phosphorus and over here it's um, um lithic fragments okay over here it's lithic fragments okay so a feldspar rich sandstone, it's called arcos or arcos. A feldspar rich sandstone, sandstone that falls within this corner, okay, in the acoustic region, it's a uh, an arcos. It's a feldspar rich sandstone. So then a lithic sandstone, it will be called a lith arenite, okay. And then if the rock has been uh, or has uh, uh, um, if, if if the rock has the clay matrix that are between zero and fifteen percent, we call that uh, sandstone arenite. Okay, but if it's between fifteen to seventy five percent of clay matrix, we will call it a a working. And then if it's over seventy five percent of matrix, it will be called a mud rock. Okay. It will be a, a mud rock. So a quartz workies have predominantly quartz are surrounded by mud or clay matrix. All right. And in a um a 
in a felspathic wachi, a felspar is more abundant, and in a lithic wachi, uh, lithic fragments are more abundant. If we are talking about a system that um, has got clay matrix that range between 15 to 75 percent, all right. The term gray wachi is seldom used today but was originally used um, to describe a lithic ridge sandstone with um, a, 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 a between 10 to you know 50 percent of mica clay or chloride matrix all right so rocks with greater than you know 50 percent matrix are called sandy mud stones okay we are called sandy mud stones so basically the sandstone, like I said, can be classified if 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 um, let's start with the arenite. If a quartz sandstone with um, or arenite with more than ninety percent of quartz, sorry, it will be quartz um, um, arenite, all right? Because it has over ninety percent of quartz, and quartz is durable and light colored, commonly in beaches and desert. But if a, a quartzic um, sandstone contains more than 25% of felspars, pink or reddish, formed near granite ridge mountains, okay? And then a lithic sandstone contains rock fragments, dark colored, common river uh, and deep um, sea deposits. And then Graiwaki, dirty sandstone, a mix of quartz, felspars and clay, uh, poorly sorted um, one, then found in a deep sea environment. So basically this is how you will be able to, or you can classify sandstone. Sandstone can be classified according to its composition. Okay? Sandstone can be classified according to its composition. Now, if we can look at this one, you can now see um, you have got a false bar over here. You've got a false bar over here. And then you also have quartz. And then this, that false bar. And um, definitely, it's a calcium-rich one. It's a calcium-rich one. And then um, you see um, a lithic here. You see a lithic here. Um, a lithic over here. So you can see that um, this is definitely a, a rock fragment. Okay, in this case, it's a schist. And then, yeah, basically, that is that. And then... If you can look, sorry, sorry about that. Yes. So um, basically, this is um, um, from the sandstone. You get to see these, um, um, these, um, the, this composition, which is why um, the the uh, the, uh, um, uh, the sandstone can also be classified according to its composition. But now, by look of this. Um, 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 rock, you can see that it has got more of felspars. So, um, if um, the matrix, let's say, are between 0 and 15, then we we'll say it's an arenite. And then we now start to look at the let's uh, whether we've got felspars or more of quartz or more of lithics. But by look of things, we have got more felspars. So, we can say it's um, um, the uh, acoustic arenite okay so basically that's how you classify the sandstones according to the composition now uh this is the classification of sandstone according to its um uh, mineral composition so this is the quartz sandstone containing over 90 percent of quartz okay and then this would be a felspathic sandstone. It means it contains at least 25% um, of felspars. And then this one, it would be a gray wacky. This one, it would be gray wacky. And then it means um, it, it has got a claim uh, or matrix with uh, um, a matrix which, you know, range between um, 15 to 75%. So these are the clay matrix, they range between 15 to, you know, 75%, then we say it's a waki, okay? And then, and then this one, it's a acoustic sandstone, meaning it has got more of the first pass. It has got more of the first pass. You can now see 
this pinkish one you can now see these pinkish ones they are dominant which is why this thing it, it, it is what you call the aquasic stone the weight aquasic coming from um at least this rock is containing at least 65 25 percent of the um of the first pass then when you classify the sandstone according to the grain size and you know sorting when we say something is well sorted, it means it, it means it contains the grain sizes of almost equal size. But when it, it, it is poorly sorted, it contains a wide range of grain sizes. So the um, and then if a sandstone is well sorted, it means we need to see the um, sand particles that are at least of the same size. All right, and then. Um, but if it's, 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 it's well, uh, if it's well sorted, it must be of the same size. If it's well sorted, it will be containing these um, same particles of wide range of size. Okay, then um, you know we've got the fine green uh, uh, sandstone that we usually see um, in the island uh, environment, and then medium grained, medium grained, and coarse grained usually associated with um, a beach and you know um, fluvial environment. So this, um, it's um, sorting of the um, scent particles. So this definitely is, you know, poorly sorted. This one is poorly sorted because of, you see this big um, uh, grain, you see this uh, one, you see that one, and then the smaller ones. So this one is poorly sorted because it contains a wide range of, uh, it contains um, a wide range of the scent particles. And then this one, you know, it's, this one is very poorly sorted. Then this one is poorly sorted because still we've got the bigger ones and the mediums and the, the, the small ones the very small ones but if here here you can see that these grain sizes this and uh, 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 particles they are almost of the same size okay then which is why it's very well sorted all right it's very well sorted and also we can che check them you know the roundness of that here um it, it, it tells you that we are still um closer to the source which is why it has got this um, um, um angular or sharp uh, edges and then now this one it is um, you know rounded it tells us that we are um, uh, the, the same particles they've been transported very far away from their source and then now it is well rounded okay and then um which is why now if we don't have, if something is well rounded it means it has been transported for quite some time right uh, because of we don't have the you know the sharp edges anymore so basically that's how we classify the sandstone according to its grain size and sorting so if we can uh, take a close look at this one so you'd agree with me that um and this is a poorly sorted this is a poorly sorted one so this um see a little thick i see the first pass over here i see some lithics i see some first pass as well and then we see these grain sizes, these sand um, particles, and then, um, yes, basically, but now if you can check, we see wide range of um, particles. So this one definitely poorly sorted, but if we were to zoom into this one, you see that this one it contains the same particles of almost the same size, okay? And then almost also this one, you can see that um, these grains, they are almost of the, um, of the same size. So. These are the well sorted sandstones, and this one would be a clearly a poorly sorted sandstone. So basically, that's how you classify the sandstone according to the how how sorted um, they are. Okay, then we've got the cement. You know, cement in sedimentology is the natural glue that binds sediment grains together. In sedimentary rocks, it forms when minerals precipitate from groundwater and fill the um the spaces. Okay, so we know that the minerals they can be in solution in um, water. In okay, so for as long as physical and chemical conditions are, are are good enough, then the minerals they can be in solution in the water. But immediately um when um you disturb they are the, 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 the physical and chemical conditions. When you change those things, you make a certain minerals to get out of solutions. So when they get out of solutions, they will be precipitated in the empty 
uh, 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 pore spaces, and then they glue and bind the grains together. So basically, the cement, uh, most of the people, they get to confuse the cements and the matrix. So matrix, usually they get to be, they are fine materials, okay, that are deposited at the same time with the gravels. But the cement are the minerals that they get out of solution later on and they fill the empty spaces and their purpose is to glue and bind the um, um, sediments together to now um, that rock to form a sedimentary rock. And then we've got um, a, a different cements. You can have um, silica cementation. You can have um, calcium carbonate cementation, iron cementation. Iron cementation, obviously, you see the reddish stuff. And then calcite, it will be softer and rich with acid because we know that um, how you identify the um, calcites, like um, uh, calcium carbonate minerals, like um, dolomite, aragonite, and many others, you can uh, identify that by reacting them with acid and then those show this uh, fizzing, okay? And then you know that uh, if they react with acid, then you know they contain calcium carbonate, then they'll be softer. And then silica, we know it's durable. It's, 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 it's hard and durable, <clears throat> which is why it will be hard and resistant, all right? So basically, that's how you classify the um, sandstone based on um, the, the cement. So... If the um if the um, you've got more of the silica, then you'll say it's a siliceous sandstone. It's a siliceous sandstone. Then if you've got more of calcites, calcium carbonate, it will be calcareous sandstone. If you've got more of clay materials, it will be, you know the weight agila, it means clay. So if you've got more of clay materials, it will be argillaceous sandstone. And then if it has got iron material, reddish um, uh, um, colored, then it will be ferruginous um, sandstone. So basically, that's how you classify the sandstone. So the, the sandstones, they can be classified in, in according to their composition. They can be classified according to their grain sizes and sorting, and also according to uh, the cementation, uh, okay, the minerals that binds, that fills the empty spaces and bind the particles together later on after the matrix and the, the particles have been deposited. So basically, uh, that's that. So, so, um, the, that's how the class, the sandstones, they are being classified. So let me take this moment and thank you guys for joining us today. It really means a whole lot to us. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, you are more than welcome to subscribe. But above all, do not forget to hit the notification button below so that you get notified once we upload new content. And I always like to say, until next time, cheers.